Okay, so we've talked about the importance of sunshine, and um, it's very important. We've talked about the basics of soils, and now we need to dive a little deeper into soil. We need to look at soil from two different, um, two different divisions, I guess we'll call it, or two different ways. We need to look at the soil composition of what the main components of that soil is, and we also need to look at the soil fertility. And so th those will be the two main ways we look at soil. Are you with me? It's not hard, I promise, but you're gonna learn a lot, so stick around. So soil composition is, uh, is about what the soil is made up of, and they come in three distinct categories, three distinct categories. Either you have a clay soil, you have a loamy soil, or you have a sandy soil. The three main soil types. Um, each one has its benefits and its drawbacks. Um, Jason Avers does a really good job of going more in depth with this than I'm going to here. And you can slide over to Jason Avers' channel and check out soil compositions. But uh, basically you want a blend of those three soil components and there's very few perfect soils in the world. Um, all of them will need to be amended to uh, to assist with the, uh, the gardening. So remember, you've either got a clay soil, a loam soil, or a sandy soil. So you can see it's the combination of these three elements that determine your soil's loft. And then um, those are really like the mineral substrates. There's organic substrates that are in that soil as well. It's a madhouse in here. But depending on what combination those three elements, sand, loam, and clay are in in your soil will determine what its tilth is, what it's, how it holds together, how it holds organic material, how it holds water, and how it holds nutrients. Yeah. And I could get into what combinations you want these things in, but basically you are gonna be at whatever soil that you've got and you're gonna to have to begin working from there. And the best thing to do is to add organic material to break up those heavy clays that will hold water and not let the roots penetrate, to add um, areas where the microbes can feed and, and break down organic matter in those loams. <coughs> and the organic material will actually hold water which the sand is really great at releasing water and letting things flow through, but the uh, it doesn't hold any nutritional value and it dries out really quick. So you want your soil to resemble a sponge as much as possible. And the easiest and quickest way to do that is to add organic material. So you need to start a compost pile if you hadn't already started one. Which leads us to the other part of soil being the fertility of the soil or to oversimplify it, the NPK value, which is what you'll see on many of your organic and inorganic fertilizers that are on the shelves of where you would typically buy seeds and other gardening items. You see, it's the NPK value, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. It's that value we can manipulate with amendments. And that is what we're gonna be doing is feeding the soil. I know a lot of people think when they fertilize, they're fertilizing the plant. And that's true in some applications of, of readily available fertilized, like in organic sense, liquid kelp, foliar spray, the leaves will actually take that nutrient up into the leaves themselves. But for the most part, when we fertilize, we're gonna be fertilizing the soil. We're gonna be feeding the microbes and the, um, the worms and all of the little things that, that make the funguses, we're gonna provide nutrients so that that soil comes to life. And then our plants will have more calcium, more nitrogen, more potassium, more boron, manganese, those 17 nutrients that all plants need by balancing the soil values which pH plays a part in this too, but that's more advanced. It's something you need to know. And let me show you what I use to amend my soil and let's 
Forget about the pH of the soil and assume that your soil is pH neutral for now. I'm a little disappointed. I was going to show you one of the most important things about building soil when it comes to amendments, but I didn't have any. My uh, finished compost reserves are done for the year, and it looks like I'm going to be building compost till about this time next year. Which is okay because I've got the rabbits working on it, and I've got the chickens working on it, and I've composted in place with some leaves. But um, those amendments are extremely important. And having animals adds to that process and puts a natural nutrient-dense packet in the compost that you won't find at any other place. If you're going to grow organic, you've got to have a organic fertilized source you got to have a manure source and I think the best form of manure of gardening is the rabbit. Um, I don't think that there's any way you beat rabbit manure and you can see the green. I bought myself a bale of alfalfa and I've begun feeding my rabbits some free choice alfalfa and uh, they seem to enjoy it. So chickens are a good source. Their manure tends to be a little hot. Rabbit won't burn um, young plants. It'll still, I think, maybe too strong for a seedling. Let me show you what I mix in my seedling mix to amend that soil. Are you coming? Do you want to see? It's uh, right there, right there. And then we'll have to open up this. I'll show so you. So worm castings is... Uh, Something that I learned last year, I put some extra garlic bulbs in there and I'm just letting these garlic bulbs kind of start in worm castings, but uh, I've got some pelletized lime. This is a source of potash that is organic. And then the last two things that I use here, this is my distribution bucket is uh, blood meal and um, I get that in a, I don't know, 25 or 40 pound sack. And then the other one I use is a uh, bone meal. And you can see it's nitrogen to uh, phosphorus and potassium numbers there. Bone meal is really good for establishing roots. Nitrogen is really good for leaves. And then the flower and fruit need some extra mineralization. But hey, I, I realize that your head may be swimming a little. Don't worry about it. Buy a bag of organic potting mix. Pro Mix is really good stuff. It's already mycorrhizal um, activated. If you can find some Pro Mix all purpose, that's a great place to start. You can run seedlings, you can pot plants with it, and you don't have to do much at all to it. It holds moisture really well. So if you're not willing to amend the soil that you've got currently, and you can't create a custom blend to help encourage the decomposition and build compost faster then you're going to have to go with one of the bag mixes which is fine look for organic look for mycorrhizal activated and uh, then the the sift on that soil will be what determines if it's a, a seedling starter or a potting mix or garden soil you can buy the cheaper garden soil mix and sift it down yourself and create your own potting mixes so that's not a big deal but soil. So remember, soil, the components of soil, it's either clay loam or silt, or clay loam or, or sand, and those will determine how much water is retained or lost and how much mineral is available. And then your NPK rating or your fertility of the soil, and that is what healthy plants are going to thrive if that NPK rating is right. We're going to talk a little bit about pH and the future episode i don't know that it's it's good for a beginner gardener the best thing a beginner gardener can do is get a soil test take a small sample put it in the uh, go to your county extension office 
ask how much they charge for soil tests, and then they'll give you a kit to take home usually that you, you go and dig up soil in various locations, mix the soil, put it in the baggies, and deliver it. And then within, under old corona, pre-corona, you could get those results within, you know, two to three days a week at the most. And I don't know about now. But you don't have to have a soil test to get started. Buy some seed mix, buy some black cow uh, and uh, potting mix so you've got some good soil to start with.